Welcome back darlings. If you're watching this, you've probably got more than a passing interest in keeping your car as looking as good as possible for as long as possible. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to spec your car in a way that will help you with that. Now, when I say spec the car, I bought this used. I didn't buy it brand new. I happened to find it in a configuration that was perfect for what I wanted. So let's start off with the most obvious thing for you. Color. White is the easiest color car to look after. And this is flat white, it's not metallic, it's not pearl. Um, it shows dirt, but not as much as you think. Black is actually the far worse for it. You can wash it in bright daylight and into bright sunlight, no problems there at all. And things don't see visibly streak on it that much, which is great. Uh, and it hides swirls and scratches particularly well. Now, Silver is also very good for that, so it's something worth considering. Um, of all those sorts of colours, light coloured cars generally hide the swirls and marring better, so like greens, blues, reds, whatever. Um, dark colours really show it up. Black is the absolute worst. Black is the absolute worst for many reasons. Firstly, it shows every single mark, um, and then it's also incredibly difficult to wash indirect sunlight because it gets very hot, it dries out very quickly, it alters the characteristics of your polishes, your waxes, all these sorts of things. So you're kind of really restricted as to when you can wash a black car. And then it's also very hard to keep it looking good and it shows the dirt the quickest. There are other things to watch out for though. Red, for example, very difficult to get a color match on. So if people do smart repairs on your car, they often stand out by a mile. Um, white is pretty easy. Black is actually pretty easy to do for colour matches for that sort of thing. Pearl white is something to kind of be aware of, I guess. Watch out for a little bit. It can be a bit trickier, but it's not such a bad thing. Um, then there are other colours that are dark, like dark blues, dark greens. Again, they share or show up a lot of the defects easy, and they have the same problems about uh, in direct sunlight. One thing, though, to add is that gunmetal grey probably has the best characteristics of all the different things in terms of it doesn't get too hot in the sun. It gets hotter than white, clearly, but it's not as bad as a really dark color. Uh, it hides dirt incredibly well. So it's got that characteristic from silver, but it does it even better and it looks a bit nicer. Um, and then it also has the characteristics. It doesn't show too many marring marks from, um, from wash process. So that's the color. But there's also paint finishes, right? So let's talk about that next. We talk about finishes, we're really talking about solid colors, metallics, and satin. I wouldn't worry too much about the solid colors versus metallics bit. In fact, most solid colors, even like this, are clear coated now, so it's not such a case of like it was in the old school days of polishing a colored paint and you're, you're actually taking the color off as well. Satin is that you really need to watch out for. So matte black or the matte colors or satin colors, they're very, very difficult to maintain you cannot polish them. So you, if you get any scratches in there, you think, oh, if I can take that out, you can't do it because you'll just make the rest of the paint shiny. You also can't smart repair them properly. Mercedes say you can't do it at all. Um, if you watch this video here, that video was of, um, of one of my neighbors at the time, that's Billy Gilmore, who's a footballer. Didn't mean anything to me, I'm not much into football. Uh, he got that nicked on the side uh, by a delivery rider coming out of Stamford Bridge and uh, he had to have the whole of the side resprayed. That was Mercedes' like, answer to that problem. I've spoken to a lot of smart repairers and they say they can't do satin because you can't blend it in and you can't polish it to get like, the, the swage lines out. Swage lines, uh, blend lines out. There is a solution to having satin and that to me is satin PPF. You get the same look, but then you get to just have a regular paint color underneath. You get the nice satin look over the top of it and also your car is PPF'd, so it's protected. And if a bit gets damaged, you just take off that piece of damaged PPF and replace it. So that is how I would go about getting a satin finished paint. So, so PPF or a wrap, colored wrap if you wanted that. That's the paint bit sorted. So the next thing I think we should look at is the wheels. Okay, so wheels, this is quite a subjective thing. Now I'm gonna talk about it as objectively as I possibly can, but people feel quite strongly about wheels. Let me say this, thick tires 
mean you get far less curbing. You can't argue with that. This, logically, this protects the wheel because the wheel is further away from the curbstones. Um, I would always choose this. Some people prefer the look of um, thin tires and th big rims. I'll tell you what though, have you ever seen a pair of those that aren't curbed? These aren't curbed at all. Uh, and that's because the thick tires really save you here. Saves you with pothole roads. It allows you to rub a long curb when you're parking. Uh, it allows you to bump up on curbs more easily without popping the tire. That happened to me on an old car, um, the previous car anyway. So that was frustrating. I like big thick tires. The ride is softer, supple. Yeah, it, it's not as sporty. But again, this is a personal preference thing when you, chew, you actively choose to have thin tires and big rims. Personally, and objectively, from a maintenance perspective, thick tires with slightly smaller rims means these will stay in better condition for longer. There's only one piece of the puzzle though, right? Finish of the wheel is another. Painted rims are far better than anything else. Uh, diamond cut is a real issue. So I'm gonna show you a picture here. This is another one I just spotted on the development earlier. Uh, the, the biggest issue with diamond cut is they are seem to be far more prone to being corroded. And when it gets under the lacquer, it ruins the look of the wheel. And I mean, you obviously in the need to refurb, but some of them, because they can only refurb them a couple of times. Whereas these, you can go again and again and again if you want to, they just strip the paint off. In terms of color, silver's the easiest. Uh, it, they clean up the easiest, they look the best. Gloss black is a real issue. Much like in every other instance where black is involved, especially gloss, it is very, very difficult to keep them looking as good for as long as possible because eventually, well, through washing, and you wash these probably more aggressively than most other parts of the car, you will mar them up and swell them and they will not look as good as they did before. These are marred and swelled, but you just can't tell because it's silver and it hides it. So definitely no diamond cut. And I also wouldn't go for anything that's gloss black if you want to keep them looking as good as possible for as long as possible. The other thing to mention here, I said gloss, Satin on the wheels, I find satin wheels are much more difficult to clean, and by which I mean to get them to release the brake dirt, uh, the, uh, so the dust and any amount, um, built up residual stuff. It's something to be aware of, uh, and I found that some of the satin finishes do not like some of the wheel cleaners. That was a costly mistake, um, especially the Porsche ones. So yeah, I just be, be wary of that. The satin finishes are harder to clean, and if you scrub them more, you're effectively polishing them and they will become shinier and you will get like the odd spoke if you really had to work on it that is far shinier than the rest of them. So that's not great. Not just the size and paint finish of your wheels that's important, but also the design. A few big spokes are far easier to clean. Now, I have like this and then you've got some thinner spokes here, but there's again, only five. They're much easier to get in and around and you can get the brushes around and the mitts around very easy and therefore you can clean them more easily. This one's got a few more spokes. It's a bit trickier, but they're well spaced out spokes, so that's okay. An issue in here though, is that there's a brake shield behind the brake disc, and that is actually very, very tight. So again, being aware of the size of the rim versus the brake shield is an important thing. This is an Audi RS6 front wheel. Tons of clearance inside there. If you had the carbon ceramics, it's a bit tighter, but there's space inside and it works, and the spokes had big gaps. This is where you start to get into problems. You've got big spokes, but then you've also got little slithers in between them. That's very hard to clean. Then you've got an awful design like this, where it means you've got lots of small intricate bits that you can't really get the brush into the barrels particularly easily. And then you've got something like this, which is appalling. And Mercedes have just got a terrible form with this really. Then you've got something like this. It's got a very big lip that is, you have to get down behind within the mitt. The brushes don't particularly get well inside that. And something like this on the Lexus, it's dark anyway, but there's lots of fine spokes and also small gaps on all of the spokes. And there's something like this again on this VW, very, very tight little gaps to get in and amongst lots of small spokes, but nothing, nothing compares to the bullshittery of this wheel design. Next, exterior trim. When I say exterior trim, the thing I'm really talking about is this stuff here. Firstly, don't go for a black pack, especially on a black car. It, it just looks like you're driving around in a bin bag. Everything's black and you're losing um, for any sort of imagination. Look, I'm not going to get into that, that's subjective. Objectively, the, the black trim around here, 
like everywhere else, marks more easily. It's soft black plastic, so it swells up and it looks worse far more quickly. Um, the other thing then is you have this metal trim around here. This is faux metal, I think, or if it is very thin. Um, particularly Mercedes, but Audi as well, this and the piano black stuff is not very chemically resistant. So it really marks very quickly. Uh, and that's an issue, you can polish them out, which is fine. Best thing to do is, as soon as you get a car with this stuff, or polish them up, ceramic coat them, um, and then you're all good to go. But the metal trim will last better for longer. One caveat is the side steps. A, don't get side steps, um, especially metal finished ones, because they do not last. They tarnish very quickly. The road salt, the dirt, the chemical cleaners, it degrades them very quite quickly. Um, doesn't matter what sort of chemicals you use. I've also really seen this to be, again, on Mercedes. They are particularly poor. Um, so we have to watch out for that. And there's more to trim than just this. There is kind of like bumper trim and sills and stuff like that. So have a quick look at that now, shall we? Now, this is an option on every single car, but if you can get uh, plastic trim around the wheel arches, around the back, this stuff's far easier to clean than the painted ones. Uh, if it rubs against another car in a car park, for example, this just takes the brunt. It doesn't look so bad if it gets damaged. These bits are parts that are easily replaceable and they don't need painting again afterwards when you replace them, which is far, far easier. The, the sills are also plastic on this. Um, some of the trim lines, I think it's all painted in. But if you can get them like this, really good. Uh, if you, you look for a car that's got this or has it as an option, I personally would choose this. Again, you may not agree from an aesthetic point of view, but from a maintenance point of view, this is better. All you have to do is just put on a bit of like um, trim protect or a ceramic coating on them. That's the only downside with these plastic trims is they do degrade over time. These have been holding up remarkably well. I haven't coated these yet. I probably should do that this summer. But um, yeah, for a seven-year-old car, it's doing all right. Um, but they can, and they will, they will always all fade. And minis are particularly poor for it. So it's all right having them, but just make sure you look after these and treat them properly. So on the mini, I would ceramic coat them instantly. I think that's us pretty much done on the outside. Just go on the inside then. Now, when it comes to the interior, don't be afraid of going for a light color. These clean up, no problem at all. Uh, if you're, this is an Artico leather, so this is uh, faux leather. Again, really hard wearing. Don't be put off by faux leather versus real leather. Real leather is slightly harder to look after, but it's marginal. Um, if you've got a light leather interior, all I would say is an important thing to do is put on like a color like dye block over the seats um, just to help protect it and stop the gene transfer. And in terms of cleaning and maintenance, it's really easy. Uh, I use Kotkemi Polestar. That works incredibly well. I use that uh, one to 20, it's a pretty weak solution. It cleans pretty much everything. Doing that once a month, once every couple of months, you're fine. If you're wearing dark blue denim all the time, you may need to wash, wash it more frequently, but the dye blocker will massively help. So there's links to ones from Color Lock and Geist and stuff down below. Uh, those things do work and they do solve the problem, but don't be put off by a light colored interior. In fact, I personally prefer it, but then that's preference, that's subjective. Objectively, it's not difficult to look after and maintain. Objectively, black leather is the easiest one to look after and maintain because it doesn't show up the dirt. But the only time having a black interior or black of any sort of thing helps. The flip side is black leather gets very hot in the summer. This stuff stays pretty cold. So yeah, make your choice. I will point out one other thing for you though. This is the only thing in my car that I would have spec differently if I had bought it brand new. I've got piano black. And as we know, gloss black anything is bad especially in the interior, because you're touching this, you're marking it. It doesn't matter how careful you are, this will always, always get marked. There are ways around it. You can polish it, you can PPF it, um, which a lot of people do. Ultimately, literally spec any other option for this than Piano Black. Piano Black is usually the stock option. It's the cheapest one. Most of these things don't cost an awful lot in terms of an option to change. 
Uh, and then if you're buying one secondhand, try and find one that hasn't had it specced. I would say that is probably the biggest thing to take away on the interior. Uh, apart from one other thing, and that is rubber mats. Rubber mats are far easier to clean. Now, you can see the ones I've got here. These are aftermarket. These are from car mats for you. Um, I chose some piping on them that was vaguely matching the interior. No, these aren't particularly clean at the moment. I need to give them a hoover. But they are so much easier to clean than carpet mats. If you want to clean these, like really deeply clean them, take them outside, out of the car, put a bit of, you can even do the bit of pre-wash foam on them and then pressure wash them off and you're kind of done. Give them a quick scrub if you need to. Uh, they're very, very easy. They release the dirt, obviously very easy. They're very easy to hoover just to get like, the dirt off them. Uh, and they're very easy to pull out and keep all the dirt inside. So rubber mats for me, absolute godsend. Also, if your shoes are mucky and muddy, wet, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Carpet mats, I think, are the devil, especially when you get cheap ones, which are very difficult to clean. So there you go. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Hope that has been useful to you in terms of helping you work out how to spec your car and options you may or may not choose. I get you may not follow any of the advice given here, but you have to appreciate that the advice is correct. You're just choosing to go for something that aesthetically pleases you more that may be harder to maintain. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.